Bonjour à toutes et à tous. Who's excited about memory leak? Right. No, don't pretend, don't pretend. Yeah. I know, it's not the most riveting of topics, but I'm here to uh, make you aware that it's a problem and what to do about it. Um, how many of you have seen this screen? All right. Have you seen it while using your application? Does, do you think your users ever see that using your application? If you don't think so, you might be surprised. So uh, Nolan Lawson did this uh, study using his tool called Tweet, how appropriate, to search for, uh, check uh, the top 10 single page apps for uh, memory leaks. And what do you know? 10 out of 10 had leaks. And these are the top apps, meaning good developers are working on them. But yeah, memory leaks are so easy to create. And um, some time ago, I was working at a famous social media site, and we figured we had a problem. We were crushing people's browsers, leaking memory. And uh, back then, without any tools, what to do about it? Where do you even start? This is a huge application with a bunch of people working on it, bazillion lines of JavaScript. Uh, so the solution was, even though it's a single page app, after 15 or so soft navigations, do a hard reload. Just give the browser a chance to start over, right? How embarrassing, right? Luckily, today we have better tools, and I want to mention a few. So the first, the first step in fixing a problem is admitting that you have a problem. And that's why we have the reporting API, which allows you to get data back from the browser when the user experiences an out-of-memory crash. So with that, we can instrument and figure out what's actually going on out there. And let's say you do have a memory leak somewhere. What are you going to do about it? Option one is call a friend, phone a friend. This is somebody who knows all the secrets of the universe, and they're going to dive into your app and unearth the leak. And then you fix it, and everything's fine, right? No. It's usually not a single one, and even if you find the one, there is usually another one just around the corner. A better option is to use, learn to use the browser tools, all right? Um, and here's the sequence. You load the application, uh, clean the garbage, called garbage collection, and take snapshot number one, memory heap snapshot number one. Then you perform an action, what the app is supposed to do, clean step snapshot number two, and then you go back to the initial state uh, as if that action was not performed, and uh, take snapshot number three. And then the goal is to compare one and three and see if you've retained any objects, DOM nodes, anything that shouldn't be retained. If, if that sounds hard, because it often is, if only there was a tool to help with that, enter MemLab. It's an open source command line tool by Facebook that's been used to find memory leaks, including some in React itself. Um, this is what it looks like. Uh, each bar represents uh, memory consumption in the initial load, the action, and then going back. In this case, we're leaking memory no matter what we do. And um, the main part, the main goal of MemLab is to make an intelligent diff of the snapshot before and after and pinpoint to exactly uh, what is the source of the leak. So in this case, it says, it's probably hard to read, it says we found one leak, leaking about a thousand objects and gives you a path to the first one, so you can find it and fix it. MemLab in action on a famous, if not the most famous, Maps application. You load the map, click Show Me Hotels, and then you say, ah, no, go back. And as you can see, we leak memory again. And so uh, MemLab is, uh, um, uses Puppeteer to drive the browser, and it needs the so-called scenario files, which is just a, a JavaScript uh, module, and you have to implement those three uh, functions, where to go, what to do, and how to go back. And if you're not familiar with Puppeteer or rarely use it, the API may be a bit of a uh, learning curve. So that's why I published MemLab Scenario Recorder. It's a Chrome extension that lets you just click around and uh, get the, that scenario file generated for you. And very quickly, common ways to leak memory. Well, in general, the thing is, did I change? No. Um, you leak memory when, when you don't need an object, but something somewhere is still referring to it, 
and the goal is you just find the thing, assign null to it, and you signal the garbage collector that this is free to go. Another thing we often do in web applications is we assign, add event listeners, but we are maybe not so friendly with remove event listener. Uh, so this is an old school React class. Everything looks fine, except when you remove it from the DOM, the event listener still hangs around, and that's a leak. How do you fix it? You just remove event listener in whatever API your framework provides. And to wrap up, I don't want to sound paranoid, but leaks are everywhere. And we have tools today uh, to find them and fix them and make our users, if not happy because we cannot guarantee happiness, at least less frustrated. Thank you.